Hello everybody and welcome to this playthrough for Expert Division with the tournament win for the Fall Major Tournament here in Gold Clash the game. Video sponsored by Gold Clash and play Demic and before we start don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also visit golfclashtommy.com for more Gold Clash related content for free. Last but not least get the ultimate tournament guides or our tour guides on patreon.com slash golfclashtommy. Check the link in the description down below. Can we get this video up to 200 thumbs up? That would be amazing. I would be very thankful for that follow the info box on the right hand side to get the club distance elevation adjustment and also what type of ball and club i do suggest you to use you don't have to follow what i do suggest but there is always a plan behind it so let's go to hole number one so for expert we are going to steal a replay from our dear friend tony richardson and we're gonna look at his play with Apocalypse Level 4 here that we actually had the, um, the pleasure to, to play against as it was a replay and we play live on stream. One and a half bar topspin, two bar side spin to the right. He does stretch out to point towards the right corner of uh, the fairway on the other side there. This is a high wind. 10.9. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that as well. It is a power 5 ball, berserker ball using 1.2 ball outside to the right and also a double great left and obviously with a perfect it does seem that that would have clipped the rough. So the thing that we would uh, have in mind here now that we're gonna look at is that first and foremost we're gonna go one ball of curl to the right, okay? Then we're going to go max overpower with Apocalypse level 4 if the wind is as high as 10.5 miles per hour. If it is above that, then we're going to reduce overpower. We can also consider changing to um, power, power 4 wind 1 ball uh, instead. If we do play with Apocalypse level 5+, plus, which I know many of us will be doing, then I think that we should be, no matter what type of wind, playing with a wind 1 power 4 ball instead to make sure that we're not going to go too far. In the end though, ladies and gentlemen, there is going to be several different type of shots here to get it to the green area or at least to roll through the rough you can use many different type of ball i do believe we are able to use a titan ball even as slow when uh, if we do have a high wind we can use sp a specific type of power four balls and specific type of power five balls and stuff like that the thing though in the end though is that we just need to get it over this is one example and that I want to provide for you, then obviously you do you do adapt based on what you feel confident confident with and what you do have as club and ball. For hole number two, I will give you a rough bump with a wind five ball. This time I do go with a burns ball, which is a power three wind five. You can also use power two wind five. And I do also believe that a power one wind five will be a possibility as well. One side spin to the left and I'm also using 0 0.2 bars of top spin. I would, however, see us having to play with half a bar of top spin instead of the 0 0.2. And the reason for that is that we will fall a little bit short with our shot here now i do adjust 6.8 rings i would like us to play one decimal less which is going to be maximum distance uh, plus 20 power three ball setting so there you do have the tweak but you can look here at the result that it's just minor tweak based on this type of shot which is going to be re which is really really close we need a little bit more top spin um one decimal less adjustment then we're gonna get that ball in the hole For hole number three, we will be playing a no movement, uh, sorry, not a no movement, but we will be playing a power hook with our quarterback. So we're going to start by adding max top spin and then three bars of side spin to the left. Now, look, I will stretch out my quarterback as far as I can and I'm looking for the cutoff between the sand and the rough. You can see here now. I move it up so it's just by the cutoff there before it falls down completely into the sand. Max curl left, max overpower, and then let's hook it. So the ball is going to travel away. We will be hitting the fairway 
bounce and then come over nicely here you can see that we were fairly close to the rough line there with our drive so i would recommend you to change to a titan or to go up a notch with a power four ball if you're getting a low type of wind meaning that you know we either want to reduce the wind so we can travel further or that we need to have a ball with more power so we can travel further obviously we do not want to clip the first uh, rough that is going to most likely danger your eagle in the end as well now while coming to that we're gonna be in a very nice and maxed out position with our guardian max back spin one bar of side spin to the left and now we're looking to position the ball guideline in a very nice type of way. We're looking for the second bounce to be in the bottom right corner of the dark green square uh, that you can see there on that zoomed in there. So it's going to be approximately one green square to the left of the pin and approximately one green square above the pin if that makes sense. Adjustment here uh, having the plus a 10 yard mark is going to be maximum distance with a 5% over adjustment We're looking to catch the funnel that is on the back end of the green at least that is the plan So it's tough with the ball guideline on the guardian But this is a really really good attempt for an albatross and we bounce on the green and it comes back out, but then it catches the funnel and roll right at pin for a lovely albatross here in hole number five. For hole number three. <laughs> for hole number four, I will be attempting a shot with my sniper from the first fairway. Oh, it's not really gonna go as I wanted to, but we do have some tweaks with this one, obviously. And three bars of side spin to the right. And I'm using the uh, using one and a half bar top spin, blue ring to the left by the rough, red ring just on top of the shadow. You can see that the ball guideline is really long, but that is because of the headwind, and we do want to make sure that we're gonna have speed enough to get towards the pin. Now, okay, adjustment medium distance with a 10% over adjustment, which is one to one, 7.1. It rings for 7.1 miles per hour. I'm using the right side of the ball halfway into the wall to the right. But you're going to notice here that we definitely need to do some tweaks. First and foremost, I want us to go with curl. So the ball is just outside the right side of the adjustment ring. We also want to reduce to 1.2 topspin. I do believe those two things will make this shot come way closer. So we definitely need to get some work here, unfortunately, on hole number four. For hole number five, I'm using the driver that gives me the most power and top spin, which is Apocalypse level five. We're looking to use six bars of top spin. So even if you change to another driver, six bars of top spin is what you should be going with. Ball guideline should point straight down the fairway to be a bit more on the right side. Not maybe entirely straight down, but a bit more to the right, but pointing down. Red ring by the rough line, and we're playing medium distance with a 10% over adjustment, which is 5.8 rings. Now for the shot, we're not going to use any curl whatsoever and try to hit perfect. The plan is to get the ball to bounce on the fairway and then roll to be just outside the shadow as you can see it rolls and that is absolute brilliant and that is exactly what we want to have it 346 yards second shot we are playing with our thorn you can play hornet you can play falcon it's all what you feel confident with i feel confident with the thorn and check where minimum distance line is i'm using in this case one bar of top spin and a little bit of side spin to the left and here my plan is to look for having a such a straight ball guideline possible into the funnel so which is going to mean that i will most likely having to correct the side spin from time to time just to make sure that i am positioned correct always the top of the blue ring by the edge of the fairway as you can see there adjustment in this case we go minimum distance with a 10 percent over adjustment and as we're not in entirely minimum distance i'm adding one extra decimal so in this case i'm adding 0.1 to my adjustment in the end we do hit a perfect ball and we see the ball bounce nicely on the fairway and getting it over there on the fringe and roll beautifully into the funnel 
to the pin. And the key here is to use a straight ball guideline. Those of you thinking about maybe using a curved ball guideline, trust me, that's not gonna give you any consistency. So a straight ball guideline is the trick for hole five funnel. For hole number six, we do want to gain as much distance possible by bouncing over the bunker and the rough. You may be wondering, why don't I go full blast? And I'm going to explain that to you uh, well, once we have taken this shot. So max top spin, uh, sorry, five bars of top spin and two bars of side spin to the left. Red ring by the rough line, but more importantly, ball guideline to point. As you can see the shadow from the trees coming on the right side of the game screen, the ball guideline to be just left of that shadow. Maximum distance with a 20% over adjustment and then it's time to try to hit. Perfect. Perfect ball and we see the ball traveling down, traveling down. So it bounces on the fairway, getting it over there nice and easy and we're getting ourselves to be positioned in a very nice way close to the rough on the right. Why don't I go full blast here? It's because the quali it's the qualifying round. Uh, I do not believe, I do not think there is worth the risk in the qualifying round. If this would have been the opening round or the weekend round, I would have spent the time trying to dial the in, dial in the shot going with some sort of a power slice towards the green area. But as we all know that has played that shot before, know that that is not 100% consistent and is really wind angle based. And that could potentially risk dropping into the water. And I do not want to give you that advice now as early in the tournament. Now we need to have a safe route, still with a chance, but as it's not really a, a deal breaker to get an albatross in the qualifying round on hole number six, then that's the reason why I leave that alone. Now, second shot, we play with our sniper. And here you may be finding different type of alternatives of a shot there. Could be a rough bumping play as well if you're looking to do something like that. But now I take on this top course, I take the safe route. I use backspin, I use side spin, and I go on the left hand side here of the tree. I'm leaving the ball guideline a little bit high up here. And the reason for that is that I want the ball guideline to come up and then fall back down, which is going to use the left side of the green. Medium distance is what I should be playing this one as and I'm using also a little curl to the right. I do think in the end though that the curl is a mistake based on the result because now we bounce and the ball comes too much to the right here and the kick down is not is coming too late and therefore we miss high. So reduce the curl or remove the curl and play without it and then you're gonna have a much more fun time for the approach on hole 6. For hole number seven, I'm going to show you two type of approaches here. One where we go aggressive, which we do see as being a, a shot where you need to have an Apocalypse level six plus or a Thor's Hammer level six plus as we do need a decent amount of topspin. Now using Apocalypse level six, we use max topspin, three bars of left spin and using the red ring to be just by the bunker line. Adjustment is gonna be maximum distance plus 10. Once that is done, we will apply max overpower here. I think that's going to be the case in just a bit. There we go. So we're going to go approximately one uh, and one and a half, somewhere between one and a half to 1.2 ball outside the adjustment ring to the left and full blast overpower. Perfect ball. And we're going to see this ball bounce and then it's going to roll past the trees there on the right. And as we do have a wind coming left to right, even though the trees may be a little bit in play, but it's still going to be taken away from play as the wind come left to right. Now I'm using the rapier and I am in very close to absolute maximum distance. This is as plus two yards as you can see. No spin is being used here and we do have the ball guideline to the hole. The thing that we're looking about doing here is to adjust a wedge a lot. So I'm using a maximum distance with a 30% over adjustment power three settings, which gives me 10 and a half rings in terms of adjustment. The thing that we should have done is that we should have gone a little bit more adjusting a 10, 10.8 uh, adjustment, which would have been maximum distance plus 30 power four ball numbers. 
So in that case, if we would have done that from plus two, we would have dropped that ball. And that is a good reference for you to bring with you if you're, you do want uh, to play this type of shot. If you do not have a POC 6 plus or Thor's Hammer 6 plus, you're gonna look for the next options that are gonna come now. For the more conservative option, or for those of you having lower level clubs, we're gonna play on the right side here. And we are going to use um, the quarterback as our driver, as you can see here now, and using blue ring by the bunker and blue ring by the rough. And that is going to be a very simple landing position to be able to replicate. So I'm using three bars of side spin to the right, and I'm also in this case using three, sorry, two and a half bar of backspin, not three. Adjustment is going to be minimum distance plus ten, which is an equal, which equals six and a half rings. Now, time to take our shot. Obviously, important to try to hit perfect, which we do. And we're gonna now look very closely to what yardage we're gonna be at. Bouncing, bouncing bouncing and it rolls and we then get down to a yardage that will be 255 yards from 255 i judge this distance to be 60 percent slider 15 percent elevation i will be using left spin here as the wind coming left to right is going to make a little mess if i'm aiming closer to the rough line as i will as i do in pro as i do in rookie i play without spin that is not what i'm gonna do here we gonna use a little spin Make sure that the ball guideline is through the hole and then we will adjust a 10 ring adjustment here for an 8.7 miles per hour, which is 60% slider, 15% elevation. We do adjust and then it's time to take our shot. Obviously, as always, when it is with approach shot, you need to hit, hit perfect. You need to hit perfect. Great ball comes from... Now, right to left, bouncing, bouncing. You can see here that if we would be hitting perfect, we would definitely have been very, very close. It could be that we need maybe a little bit more than 60%, maybe a 62, 64, but I believe that 60 is gonna be very close to the end goal at least. So either you go aggressive, you have a wedge towards the pin, or you go a bit conservative and you will be playing with a long iron towards the pin. For hole number 8, I want you to use a sniper level 10 or you should be using a guardian. It's because we do want to have 6.5 bar backspin. One bar of side spin to the right as well. And we're looking to get this ball guideline. You can see that I'm looking to have it approximately 2 green squares short of a pin. And I am a little bit short with that goal. We are like approximately 1.5 green squares short of pin. We need to be 2. And in the end, we will be adjusting one to one here, 5.8 rings. And then it's time to take our shot. And obviously you notice here that I'm using a wind ball to reduce the wind as much as possible. Unfortunately, great right. But unfortunately it becomes lucky as we are getting this ball to bounce and we get this one to bounce in on the second bounce. In the end though, what means a great right here? It obviously means that we are positioned too much to, um, when it comes to too much to the left in that case, which means that a great right in that case will, or like should, if we do hit great right, to miss more to the right. We can also consider, honestly, to keep adjustment, but, but back up a little bit, because you can see how the ball turns in the end. So I do believe that one of the two things is what we do need to do either to move a little bit more right or you need to back up a little bit to let the ball come in left and then fall right up to you to decide in the end though this adjustment will with those minor tweaks or one of those two minor tweaks will be getting close for a hole in one on a really tough part three For hole in number 9, we're gonna play a very tough par 5, especially with this type of wind. I want us to use a wind wind 3 power 5 ball, which there is relic ball, stealth ball, baba ball, we do have yeah, megalodon ball, we do have, what do we, we have, we have a lot of these, to be honest. Like 2 bars of top spin, 1 bar side spin to the left. You can see the tip of my ball guideline to be just at the end of the bunker in terms of height. Uh, half of the red ring inside the rough, 
adjust maximum distance with no elevation and three quarters of the ball outside the adjustment frame to the left no over power and we are looking to bounce the ball on the fairway and getting the ball up to the top left corner you can see here that we may be a bit short we could have maybe squeezed in a two and a half bar top spin i think that is actually good enough especially when we play with a power five ball we do need the power five ball not so much for the drive we could be able to do that well with a power three ball but i do think there is great value in using a ball like this or to a stretch a wind win three power four ball as to prevent us from having to go with max overpower for the second shot because max overpower trying to hit a spot in between the trees yeah i don't know if that will create a big mess for us in the long run but at least here now when we do um, when we when we play this type of shot with this type of win now being able to use a minor set of overpower which in this case is three rings then that is really good for us making sure that we at least can hit a minor great right or a great left instead of going full blast and risk maybe hitting a bad great right or a bad great left or even a good shot so it's all about making sure to get the eagle here because honestly there is no albatross in play on hole number nine Thank you so much everybody for watching this playthrough for Expert with the tournament wind for the fall major tournament. Important to get a good start as qualifying round tiebreak will definitely have an effect on the score or on the outcome on your position in the end. Video sponsored by Gold Clash and Play Demic. Make sure you get our ultimate tournament guides from patreon.com slash gold clash Tommy. Link directly in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and good luck in your gold clash game.